you heard of, of the concern about climate change affecting life and lifestyle on Earth. Resilience, mitigation, and adaptation are being discussed by policy leaders. Knowing the chemistry that controls climate will help you frame and understand the debate. The first key topic to consider is the Earth's energy balance. The absorption and release of the sun's energy by our atmosphere. In order to understand the energy balance, we need to understand the carbon cycle and photosynthesis, as well as the response of chemicals like carbon dioxide and methane to radiative energy. As animals, we exhale carbon dioxide and um, plants take it in during photosynthesis. Water, rocks, and ecosystems all store carbon for different lengths of time. Carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere have varied over time and show a strong correlation with the Earth's temperature. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere absorbs outgoing infrared radiation from the planet's surface. This leads to warming. You have experienced this in a greenhouse or in your car. The Earth also breeds as a complex system. The biomass of the planet's surface takes in more carbon dioxide in the summer growing season than in the winter when photosynthesis slows down. To understand how molecules interact with infrared energy, which is often called heat, we need to know their shape. If we apply some essential chemical concepts, we can predict their shape based on their bonding pattern. The Vesper model it's based on where the outer electrons are located around the molecule. The valence electrons of atoms often control the bonds between atoms in a molecule. Electrons hang out in pairs. Pairs of electrons and bonds, as well as other valence electron pairs that are not bonded, can be described as negative charges in space. Because like charges repel each other, these negative charges in space spread out so that each is as far away from the others as possible. By assuming that the separation of these regions of negative charges is maximized, we can make a prediction on the shape. You are 60% water, so understanding this molecule is a key to understanding yourself. In a covalent bond, a pair of electrons are shared. If the atoms are the same as in the hydrogen molecule, H2, then the electrons are equally shared. However, most covalent bonds are between different animal, atoms. This unequal sharing leads to a polarity or a partial distribu distribution of charge. The bond has a slight negative side and a slightly positive side. This is called a dipole. The direction of the dipole from positive to negative is indicated by an arrow. The molecule shown here, hydrochloric acid, has a very strong dipole. Like covalent bonds, molecules can be polar or nonpolar. If all the atoms surrounding the central atom are the same, then the molecule is nonpolar. This occurs because the geometrical symmetry of the molecule's shape leads to the dipole vectors canceling each other out. The molecule shown here, boron trifluoride, does have negative and positive regions of charge, but the dipoles cancel each other and the molecule is nonpolar. Water molecules have four pairs of electrons in space distributed around the central oxygen atom. Two pairs are in hydrogen-oxygen polar covalent bonds, 
and the other two pairs are non-bonding. For the space between these four groups of negative charges to be maximized, they must be arranged in a tetrahedral shape. Since two of the four groups in the tetrahedra are bonded to hydrogen, while the other electrons spin around in their region, water has a bent shape. The bent shape and its polar covalent bond gives water molecules a positive charge on one side and a negative charge on the other side. These partial charges make water molecules stick together in interesting ways. Now let's consider the shape of carbon dioxide. Because of the double bonds, there are only two charged regions of space. The space between the charges is maximized when carbon dioxide has a linear shape. The opposite directions of the polar covalent bonds cancel their polarity, and carbon dioxide is nonpolar. Besides influencing the type and quantum of radiation absorbed by a molecule, shape also influences solubility. We'll if we will explore solubility later in the course. Infrared radiation has enough energy to cause carbon dioxide bonds to vibrate, meaning the energy causes the atoms in the molecule to move relative to each other. This local movement can cause small changes in the charge distribution of the molecule. Unique quanta of energy trigger these vibrations in different kinds of molecules, creating a sort of fingerprint referred to as the molecule's IR spectrum. This slide shows that as the intensity of energy drops from high to low, bonds are rotated rather than broken. Remember that ultraviolet energy breaks the oxygen-oxygen bonds in ozone. Infrared energy is released by the Earth, having been stored from a day in the sun, and absorbed by carbon dioxide in the atmosphere before it can go up to outer space. The energy is retained in the atmosphere, changing Earth's energy balance. This has happened before, most recently 140,000 years ago. Nobel Prize winning chemist Linus Pauling recognized the importance of trends in the periodic table. One trend is an atom's ability to attract an electron. This atomic property is called electronegativity. Pauling used Lewis's octet rule to explain electronegativity, and there is evidence that atoms are especially reactive when the octet rule is broken. Nonmetals are electronegative because they satisfy the octet rule by attracting electrons. Metals, on the other hand, achieve the octet rule by losing an electron or two so that they are the opposite of electronegative, they are electropositive. The closer an atom is to satisfying the octet rule, the more strongly it attracts the eighth electron. The chemical process of stealing electrons and forming a bond with the atom carrying them is known as oxidation. Combustion reactions, which we talked about previously, are oxidation reactions. The oxygen atom is gaining electrons, so is eight electrons in its outer shell.